So this is a Terry Aharitis' crop and uh, we've been doing IPM in the crop for the last few months and um, yeah, it's really going quite effectively. We've, we've introduced some predators, some aureus and cucumerus and um, some parasitoids, some aphidias and incarsia and rectoceros which have been controlling different pests which we've got in the region. One of the, the problems in Virginia that we've faced here is that when we start the crops, when they plant the young crops, there's a lot of uh, thrips that are pupating out of the soil uh, from last year's crop and uh, we need to actually control them chemically unfortunately. Um, hopefully we don't have to do it in the first year so much, but it's about knocking those thrip levels down um, and when we get to flowering we then introduce the predators. We need to make sure that the chemicals that we spray in that first month um, aren't too residual so they don't last for two or three months in the greenhouse and affect the predators as we release later. And one of the big problems we've faced in Virginia is confidor um, and that can be from the previous crop or seedlings drenched in high levels of confidor inhibits the aureus and aphidias and other predators. So once we uh, get to flowering and the residuals broken down we start releasing the predators. Um, we'll, the first predators we put out are aphidias for aphid and this season we found that the aphids have come in very early and uh, needing to get good levels of aphidias out is, is critical and not just doing a six releases of, uh, of low levels in a row, it's about doing one or two big releases a week apart. Um, and also the aureus is key so we need to get that in the first first three weeks in big levels and once the aphidias and, and aureus are established then we can start putting in things like persimilis for two spotted mite and also cucumerus for broad mite and thrip larvae. So the crop's been planted in August. Um, we, we had some virus, in, uh, tomato spotted wood virus in the crop in the first five or six weeks um, from thrips that were in the house from last season. We controlled that so we should really see start seeing an advantage to the grower over the next three or four months. And the virus levels? And the virus level, there is still a bit of virus around the edges um, but hopefully in about two or three weeks that virus level slows down. Um, one of the key pests in the region is thrips. The aureus is definitely a key predator which is knocking down the numbers and uh, they're pretty much like a 24 hour pesticide. They, they're in the flowers all the time, they're always feeding on the thrips and they're getting rid of them. So uh, every flower now in the greenhouse here that we're looking in has aureus established with juveniles and um, they're doing really good control. But the next step next year is looking at putting better thrip screening around the house um, to stop the, um, the thrips from blowing into the, into the so house. So the growers looking at that, yeah, they're doing that? Yeah, yeah. Are not concerned about ventilation? Oh, a little bit, but I, I think um, especially in the springtime when it's not too warm to have that thrip meshing down um, and you can lift it up as it gets hotter later in the year when the thrip blowings aren't as, as heavy, yeah? But that September, October, November period when the thrips are blowing in, I think that's critical to have some thrip meshing around the sides. Nice strategy. At, at the start, maybe it's a little intensive because like I said, where you've got to do a bit of a spray program for the first four weeks, but after that, this grower hasn't done any sprays for the last, I don't know, six to eight weeks, so they've done, they've done nothing except for release beneficials, so that's really important. So they've got a lot of extra time to I don't know, do other odd jobs around the farm. So. Like put on thrips mesh and find right. bones. <laughs> so in the past, they would have traditionally been spraying twice a week at least for thrips. Um, and now this grow hasn't sprayed once for the last seven weeks. Yep. So it shows you so far. And we, we, we believe that the next five or six months should continue the same. Other pests that we're going to start to see now more as it warms up is a two-spotted mite. And we use persimilis for that and californicus. Um, and then probably around Christmas, we'll, we'll probably start seeing some broad mite and that will probably be one of the harder ones to control and we might need, we'll be using cucumerus but on top of that we might need some uh, wettable sulphur, um, thivet sprays um, that will hopefully be able to bring the numbers back. This is a new program, how many farms are you doing this on in Virginia this season? So approximately 15 at the moment, so at Virginia to start off with and um, uh, so far a lot of the growers are happy so they've done a couple of houses just to try it out but now they're already looking at expanding so they've done one or two and they're comparing it to their other houses which they've sprayed and a lot are finding it more efficient and a lot better to do it in the IPM programs. I understand you see some resistance issues too around the place with the pesticides you've been trying to use in the early stages of the crop? Yeah definitely, it, it varies from, uh, from place to place but um, a majority of the places are having a lot of resistance to, to multiple um, pesticides. So with thrips? With thrips, yeah, absolutely with thrips and even some, some with aphids as well that we've found of late. So, um, and you've sent some thrips away for testing? Yep, yep, so we've sent them so, to... Yeah, so we've sent them to Grant Heron, so hopefully in the next week or two we'll get the results back. But the typical chemicals that are, uh, aren't working very well are unitifols, um, even uh, DDVP, um, Success, um, Telstars, all those... Um, chemicals that some farms are giving 
you know, zero to ten percent control. So, what's the growers' response when they're hearing this, seeing this sort of problem? <laughs> um, a bit, bit dismayed, but um, I think it's been a problem here for quite a few years. I think it's just that they've sprayed so much, you know, two or three times a week, every week of the year, that um, they've sort of masked the resistance here a little bit because they're spraying so many different chemicals. A lot of them have been used and they don't really know if they're resistant at all yet. Hopefully the advantage of having Steve in the district is that he can check these crops once or twice a week for the growers and actually tell the growers what, what's happening after each spray. But before the growers probably weren't um, inspecting the flowers as much as Steve and using an eyepiece. So um, just the little hand eyepiece, um, 10 times magnification has made a big, a big difference um, to be able to see what's happening in the crop. A couple of things I'm getting from the growers as well, as I said, they just used to come out and spray for no reason. They didn't know, it was just habit. So they come out, you know, twice a week or that and that's spray. So these are people in the program are saying yeah, that's exactly right. in, the in the past? The program, and they said in the past, they didn't know, they just come out and, and it was habit, they would just come out and spray whatever they had to. And they didn't really get a chance to look over at what they were doing and now having me in the crop or going through it, they're actually getting an eye in for, you know, different beneficials. They're seeing other insects pop up, like good beneficials that, in the past, they would have sprayed and would have killed them. So they've got other benefits, and their plants are looking a lot healthier. So they're they're finding it. It's, it's a lot not not involved, but they're learning a lot as well as they're going along and, and learning new things and enjoying enjoying doing it again instead of just whacking on a, a suit and going out there and spraying. So one of the one of the key things is looking through the flowers. So if I pick up a flower, what we want to do is we want to check in the flower for for thrips or um, in this case RS. So. In the bottom of this flower now, if I just hold out my hand and I can tap it out, we've got one of the key predators, which is this guy here, which is an aureus, and he's killed a thrip. And actually, if you can see there, just on my hand, there, there's actually a dead thrip. So he's actually, I would say, sucked the life out of that guy. So, And now these guys are uh, throughout all the flowers, and some flowers have multiple aureus as well. And but these guys are in there 24-7, so they're in there all the time, continuously feeding. So any thrips that come into that flower are dead. So it's working, working really effectively. So one of the things that we've been finding uh, in areas that in certain spots there's been uh, some aphid hotspots come up in the, each of the glass houses or greenhouses. So what you would normally find is aphids in the tip of the plant and you'll, you'll find it a lot and at the bottom of the plant. So one of our strategies is to release a wasp called Aphidius. So um, we don't actually have any wasps buzzing around but I can show you what they cause here is they go and they parasitize, parasitize the aphids and then they cause these which are mummies and inside of these mummies are little wasps which if you can zoom in on this one here that's actually got an emergence hole so these wasps will fly out of here and they'll parasitize all the other aphids so if I was to get down here and show you this used to have aphids on it and I can probably turn over a couple of these leaves you can start to see all these have been parasitized some ones here as well, so lift that over. So they they used to be aphids, now they've all been all been parasitized. So the uh, the adult wasps have laid eggs inside the aphids, and then they've uh, emerged from the aphids, and they're just flying around the crop. So we could walk around the crop now, and in certain spots you'll find little wasps flying around, and they'll just be pretty much hunting these guys down, and um, yeah, parasitizing them, causing mummies then those aphids will die and then we'll have more little wasps around. So you've got your own little insectary in the greenhouse, so it's very effective and it pretty much can control the aphids for the rest of the year. So we only have to do little small releases after we've put out one big release or two big releases as Lachlan said at the start of the video and um, we have control for the whole season. Yeah, Didn't need any spot spraying? Um, every now and then you might need a pyramor, like a, a, just one spot spray, but most of the time it's one plant, so one or two plants that you'll need to spot spray and you'll get all these aphids, aphidias come up and then it control the whole house. So you would use, you know, a couple of grams of, of chemical. So it's stuff all.